Hey Connect, my name is Chris and I am one of the pastors on the team. Welcome to Connect Church. If you're new to our community, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are and how you can be a part. We exist as a church to connect the disconnected to a growing relationship with God. Because if you want to grow spiritually, you got to connect with God, His community called the church, and His purpose for your life. Otherwise, you're just going to feel empty, lonely, purposeless. But it doesn't have to be that way because what many of us have discovered is that Jesus makes all the difference. He connects us with God, His church, and our purpose. So we want to help you first connect with Jesus through services like this, either online or in person at the Lone Tree Rec Center. Second, connect with people by joining a community group where you can grow in your faith alongside some friends. And third, connect people with Jesus by serving and sharing your story with others. So if you want to grow spiritually, you should join us as we discover and follow Jesus together. And the best way to do that is by joining a community group. You tuned in on an awesome day because today we're kicking off our groups registration for the winter session of community groups. The groups will actually start on the week of January 24th, but you should sign up for a group today so you don't miss out when that comes around. When you show up to group for the first time, here's what you can expect. You'll begin to meet some people who will become friends. You'll discuss the passage from the weekly message and how it applies to your life. And you're going to be a part of a community that supports one another through the highs and lows of life. If you want to join a group, you can find one either online or through our app, and you can just shoot the leaders an email letting them know that you're interested in joining the group. Now, if you don't have the app yet, you should totally download the app because it is not just the best way to find a group, it's also a great way to access the weekly study guides, communicate with your fellow group members, and so much more with everything else that's going on around Connect. Last week, Tyler did a phenomenal job wrapping up our Spoken series, which means this week we get to kick off a new series. To begin the new year, it's called New Thing. And in this series, we're going to look at what the wisest man who ever lived has to say about our search for a new you, new friends, and new purpose. We're going to look at the book of Proverbs, and we're going to discover answers to questions that we all wrestle through in life. And I'm excited to tell you more about it, but let's do this before we jump in. Let's pray and ask to hear from God through the message. Lord, you're so good. Thank you for an opportunity to open your word together now. Holy Spirit, will you please speak through me and help us discover the identity that you have intended for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Congrats, you did it. 2020 was one for the history books, but it is over. And it's safe to say that all of us hope that 2021 is a better year than last year. On, on a typical year, about half of us make a New Year's resolution, but it is estimated that three out of four of us will make a New Year's resolution this year. Have you made your New Year's resolution yet? I mean, just share in the chat if you have. Are you, or are you just someone who just refuses to make a New Year's resolution? That's cool. I, I respect that. I get it. You can change any day of the year, right? How's that going, by the way? As a culture, we're obsessed with a changed me, a better me, a new me. Why is that? It's because we believe that in order to be content, we got we to gotta be better. And we think that if we just try harder, we can make ourselves better. 
And then when we're better, we'll be more content. But there's a problem that you and I have faced time and again. 90% of our New Year's resolutions fail. Example A, yours truly. Last year, on January 1st, I came out of the gate rearing to go. And I stand before you today to testify to the fact that I don't even have a clue as to what my New Year's resolution was last year. Did you know that God is discontent with the way things are too? And he wants us to be better as well. And the Bible has a lot to say about it. So I did some research just to find all the verses in the Bible that talk about you and I doing something to make ourselves new, to make ourselves better. And of the 31,102 verses in scripture, now I wanna make sure I get this next statistic correct. Zero talk about us doing something by our own willpower to make ourselves better. Zero. Well, that's a bummer. Like, what are we supposed to do? Just pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and try harder this year? Come on, we know that's a flawed approach because that's what we've done every other year. And year after year, we get the same disappointing results. Friends, as we stand on the doorstep of 2021, we have a decision to make. Are we going to try the same approach that we've tried every year? And are we going to try to will ourselves to be a better person? Or are we open to a new approach, to God's approach to a new you? We've tried our way. What do you say we at least explore God's way and see what he has in store? I mean, you know the definition for insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Well, you're smarter than that. I just know it. And because of that, let's do this. Let's see what God's way is to a new you. And to do so, we're going to start in Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. So if you've got a Bible, you can turn with me there now. And then what we'll do, once we get the framework for how we should think about things, we're going to then go to Ephesians 4 to flesh things out more. All right? If you need a Bible, you can follow along in our app. You can access both Proverbs 3 and Ephesians 4 right there in the app where you'll also find a place to jot down notes. As you're getting there, let me tell you a little bit about who wrote Proverbs. You see, I called him the wisest man to ever live, and that's because he is. You see, King Solomon was the king of Israel about 3,000 years ago, and God gave him an unprecedented opportunity. God told Solomon that he would grant whatever he asked for, now Solomon wisely asked for wisdom, and God gave it in abundance. In fact, there were other leaders of other nations who would come and seek out Solomon to gain from his wisdom. And today we get to hear from Solomon about God's way to a new you. So check it out with me in Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. These verses are more than just a cliche graduation gift. In these verses, we see the promise and the prescription of God to a new you, a better you. And it's simply this. Go the wise way and submit your way to God's way. This completely flips the conventional way of thinking on its head because the, what the world tells us is that we just need to try harder if we want to be better. But here, Solomon anchors our self-improvement, our brighter future. He anchors it in God's way, not our way. We all want to change. We want to be better. So the question is, are you trusting your way or God's way to a new you? Sure, we want to be fit, we want a good financial situation, but more than that, let's be real. We want to be known as honest people, people who have integrity, who are generous, caring, kind, compassionate, forgiving. And if that's the case, we have to ask ourselves, are we trusting our way or are we trusting God's way to the new you we all desire? What is God's way anyway? Well, to find out, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4 and pick up in verses 17 and following because here we get to hear from somebody who gets transformation. 
His name is Paul, and he formally was persecuting Christians with great zeal. But he met Jesus, and it changed everything for him because then he went on to be the greatest missionary the world's ever known. He gets the change from old to new. So let's see what Paul has to say about God's way to a new you. Now in verse uh, 17 of Ephesians 4. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity in their full of greed. Not knowing God in the life that he offers, these people had back then, they had just given themselves over to sensuality in every kind of impurity. They're full of greed. Does that sound like anyone or anything you've seen today? It's interesting, whether it's first century Ephesus or 21st century America, the cultural bent towards sexuality and finance is the same. And here, Paul addresses this group of people he calls the Gentiles, a term that he uses in this passage to describe people who don't know Jesus. They aren't believers in him. And he contrasts that with the way of believers, followers of Jesus. In the fulcrum that determines the difference is what he highlights next. Now in verses 20 and 21. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Christ Jesus. So for those of us who have RSVP'd yes to Jesus' invitation to follow him, the scales have been tipped. We are different than the way of the world. We're different from the way of the Gentiles, as Paul would say. And it is through Jesus that God makes us new. Now, in verses 22 through 24, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This language of putting off the old self and putting on the new self, it's language of changing clothes. And when we are clothed with Christ, we're no longer recognizable by our old way of life. We're made new. Legend has it that the great St. Augustine, who wrote the historic work Confessions, a staple in Christian literature even today, before he came to Jesus, he actually lived with a prostitute. I know, right? Probably playing board games at night. And when he, find, he, he comes to Jesus, he's saved, he recognizes this new life in Christ. It's said that he was walking down the street one day when that same prostitute saw him and, and called out. With his eyes fixed ahead, he just kept walking. She runs after him and calls out again, Augustine, it is I. To which he responds, I know, but it is no longer I. Being made new isn't something we do. It's something, or should I say someone, we put on. And the reason we should look to Jesus more than anything else the world is selling us to be made new is because Jesus does new. From the beginning of time to the end of time, Jesus does new. It's his thing. Paul elsewhere summarized it this way in 2 Corinthians 5. He says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. It, it doesn't get much clearer than that. The old has gone. It has passed away. And the new is here. So, what if we tried things God's way? Like, we know our way, we're familiar with that, but what if we tried God's way to a new you? What could we expect then? Well, would it be a fit body, a padded bank account? Maybe. Because here's the deal, following Jesus isn't just better, it makes us better at life. But, and this is a big but, as we see in Ephesians 4, that's not the goal. That's not Jesus' primary motive in making us new. 
What does Paul say? He says, the Gentiles chase after these things in the futility of their thinking. We're not going to chase after anything in the futility of our thinking. So let's see what he wants to do in us. Because really, whether or not we do know Jesus, you and I both want to be known for more than our weight in our bank account. I mean, when was the last time you were at a funeral and somebody got up and celebrated the person's fitness level or their finances? Or their exciting lifestyle or even love life for that matter? It doesn't happen. After a few jokes, it's the person's character that people celebrate and remember, isn't it? Well, let's hear what, the, what God wants to do in us, how he wants to make us new in the character qualities that that'll result in. Check this out. Back in Ephesians 4, 25 through 32. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for bringing or for building others up according to their needs. Then it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every kind of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God forgave you. How cool would it be if on your funeral day, people got up and celebrated you this way? It's kind of a morbid image for a New Year's sermon, I get it, but just track with me for a moment. Your neighbor gets up and they start to celebrate how your neighborhood was a better place because you lived there. You were honest. And after they sit down, your spouse or your best friend, they take the mic and they rave about how you always sought peace when conflicts arose. You, you never let the sun go down while you were still angry. You didn't even erupt in anger when you felt tempted to do so. Next, your boss comes to the front and they talk about how you never stole from the company. While others were browsing social media on the clock, you were problem solving the roadblock before the team. Someone from your community group takes the mic next and they talk about how you gave sacrificially and what you didn't know at the time, your giving actually influenced them to start giving to others too. When they sit down, someone else from your group comes up and they share how you were always encouraging. It wasn't gossip that seasoned your speech. It was encouragement that characterized your words. Always building other people up. Then your kids line up. And your first shares how the memory that seared in their mind was that you would get up before everyone else in the family and you would pray and read your Bible every day. Then when your oldest sits down, your youngest stands and shares how you always responded with grace and mercy. Like when they rebelled that one time, okay, the many times they rebelled, you, you responded with such grace. As the audience listens to account after account, story after story of your life, the, the common threads become clear. You were kind, compassionate, forgiving, because Jesus forgave you and made you new. Well, good news. Today is not your funeral, which means there is still time to be made new. And what better time is there to become a new you than at the start of a new year? So as 2021 dawns, what do you say? What if we experience God's way to a new you? Maybe you're at the point in your life where you have tried things your way and you're desperate. A change is not occurring at the rate in which you hoped and you're like, I've got to do something different. So you're ready to just throw your hands in the air and cry out to God and say, fine, I'll try it your way. If that's where you're at, I want to encourage you. Surrender is exactly where you need to be. When we call out to God, he hears us and he meets us right where we are. And he changes us into the person that you and I were designed to be. 
but maybe maybe you've been following Jesus for some time. Like you decided to follow him a while ago. You were made new in God's eyes then, but you've been trying to functionally make yourself new, functionally improve, make yourself better, change. You've been trying to do that by your own willpower. And that that process of being made new over time is what the ancients called sanctification. It's the leg of our spiritual journey from the time that we come to Christ, where we're made new in God's eyes. It's an instantaneous thing. Jesus washes us clean. We are righteous. We are pure in God's eyes. But what you and I both know is that we still live in this fallen world and we still struggle with sin. So we still blow it at times. But what's amazing is we're supposed to be transformed to become more like Christ in our actions, in our way of life. That's the the sanctification process where we're functionally being made new. Now, having been a Christian for a couple decades now, here's what I've noticed about this sanctification leg of the journey. That while I rely on Jesus to save me, I all too often look to myself for my own sanctification. Can anyone relate? I'm not alone in this, am I? We look to Jesus to make us new, to save us from our sin, and then we try to change ourselves. Like if I were to say it this way, we we look to Jesus because we can't change ourselves. And then we try to change ourselves to become like him. Huh? But that doesn't even make any sense. And yet I've done it, and you've done it. Paul even did it. And elsewhere in a letter he wrote to the Romans, he shares that we, the antidote to this problem, the the answer to this thing where though we are saved, the way we're sanctified, it's actually the same way we're saved. You see, you have to live into this simple reality. The gospel doesn't stop. It continues. And instead of just looking to Jesus only for our salvation, we need to look to him for our sanctification as well. The beauty of it all, is that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, God in us, to do this very thing. You see, it's the Holy Spirit working in us that transforms us to be more like Jesus. So when we take off the old self, like an old pair of clothes, we need to put on the new self, put on Jesus daily, just like we would change our clothes. And as we step into this new year, Here's what we need to keep in mind, all right? Because it doesn't matter whether or not you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus. The the antidote to our, our search for a new you is the same, and it's this. The way to a new you is not your what. It is his who. It's not what you do, but who you follow that makes all the difference in becoming a new you, to becoming a better, a changed you. So as we step into 2021, what do you say? Let's step forward together and experience who God wants us to be in Christ. Now, I know most of us are planning to make a New Year's resolution. At least that's what the statistics say. Three out of four of us, right? That's what I shared earlier. Well, here's the the call for all of us today. Let's make the same New Year's resolution this year. And now the New Year's resolution experts tell us that if we're to achieve our New Year's resolutions, there's a couple things we should do. We need to keep it simple, make it tangible, and do it together. So we're just going to do that as we make this New Year's resolution together today. We're going to keep it really simple. Get to know the who, and you'll know what to do. Now let's make it tangible. Read your Bible daily to get to know the who. If you don't know where to start, typically I'll point people to the Gospel of John because it's a great way to get to know Jesus. But throughout this series, over the next few weeks, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs, hearing from Solomon. And I would invite you to do something. Proverbs actually has 31 chapters in it, like a chapter for each day of the month. So what if you did this this month? What if you read the chapter of Proverbs that aligns with the day of the month? For example, today is January 3rd, so what if you read Proverbs 3 and just got to know God and His wisdom through that chapter. And then tomorrow, Proverbs 4, and so on. We are making it simple. We're going to make it really tangible by reading our Bible. And let's do this. Finally, let's do it together. Connect 
in a community group to grow in your faith and make some friends. You heard about how you can sign up earlier online through the app. We would love to connect with you. Now, as we step into 2021, strong starts make all the difference. If we don't start somewhere, we're not going to get anywhere. So we're going to do it together. And here's how. We're in the middle of a week of prayer right now. It kicked off on January 1st, but I invite you to join us as we pray first to start 2021. And here's how you can be a part. Whether it's on the app through the prayer push notifications or by following us on social media at connectchurch.co, join us as we hear from a member of our church family each day uh, through the first seven days of January, and we're going to be praying through Psalm 40 asking God to do a new thing this year. If you want to be a part, check out the app or follow us on social media. We're excited to be on this journey with you. Now, to conclude, I want to share with you about a New Year's resolution that I actually did keep. It was way back in 2005, and on January 2nd of that year, don't judge, so I was late to the game, on January 2nd, my pastor posed a challenge in his message. He said, I challenge you all to read through the whole Bible this year. Sounded crazy to me. But apparently, if you read four chapters a day, you can read the whole Bible, Genesis through Revelation, in one year. Well, my dad and I get in the car after the service, and we're driving home, talking about how we encountered God through the the service that day, and we just decided, you know what? Let's just give it a shot. Together, we're going to try to read through the Bible in a year. Can I tell you something, friends? Not only did I get to read through the Bible that year, every day since January 2nd, 2005, I get to know God more by reading His Word. This isn't something that uh, you should celebrate me for. It's not about me at all. You see, reading the Bible daily isn't a drudgery. It's a joy. In 2005, I got to know the who. And he changed me. He made me new. You see, it was on February 6th of that same year that I decided to get baptized, dying to my old self, rising anew in Jesus. And when I got to know Jesus, I can't help but spend time with him every day. I hope you experience the same because when you look to God's way to make you new, I can't wait to see what he will do through you. So, How are you going to respond today? Are you going to receive Jesus and let him make you new? Or have you already been made new? Like like you have been saved by God's grace, but you've been trying to, to functionally make yourself new by your own willpower. What's your step? What's your action step? Take some time now, reflect on what you've heard God say, and then I invite you to make a note of that on your Connect card because one, it's going to help you take action on that thing, whether it's surrendering your life to Jesus or it's asking for prayer or, hey, I need to read my Bible every day or whatever it is for you. And then what we're going to do as a team is we're going to pray for you this week. Let me pray for us now as you reflect on what God said. Lord, you're so good. Thank you for an opportunity to hear from you today. Thank you that we get to be made new, not by our own willpower, but by your power, by your son, Jesus. And we celebrate and remember him now. In his name, amen. We now get to take communion. It's a weekly practice that we do at Connect because it anchors us in this reality. Jesus is the one who makes us new. And he did that when he died on the cross for our sins. The bread represents his body, which he gave for us, for you, for me, so that we can be made whole. Let's take the bread and remember Jesus together. In the cup, it represents his blood that was shed on the cross for your sin and for mine. Let's take this and remember the salvation we have in Jesus. So at this point, we get to give back to God through the ministry of Connect. And I got to share something with you. It was a a video that 
Justin texted me just a couple days ago. Justin is the lead pastor of the, of the local church. So little backstory, the local church is the church plant in Arvada that we gave our entire opening day offering to this past fall to help advance God's mission through them. We did that for a couple of reasons. We did it because we dream of a front range where everyone is connected with God, the church, and their purpose. And we know that it takes an all hands on deck, a united effort to share Jesus with the front range. So we gave sacrificially to advance God's mission through them. And Justin was blown away by your generosity. And he wanted to share that with you. So check this out. Hey, Connect Church, this is Justin McKay from the local church. We're a, a church plant in Arvada, Colorado, specifically in Old Town. And you guys were so generous on your launch Sunday this past fall to give us a gift to help us launch into the new year. And I just want to say thank you. That was incredibly generous, and your generosity has inspired us as we start as a church plant to be just as generous in 2021, to be open-handed with what God gives us to others. And so thank you so much. We've already given to one church plant here in Denver, Colorado, because of your generosity and your inspiration for us to do the same. So thank you so much. We believe in you. Pastor Chris and his team are doing a great job, and we know that we can do a lot together as we partner together in God's kingdom um, and as two church plants, um, we're better together. And so thank you so much for modeling unity and generosity. You guys have inspired us to do the same going forward in 2021. Thank you again, Connect Church. We're rooting for you. We believe in you and we can't wait to partner in more ways in the future. Happy 2021. Thanks guys. I love being part of a church family like Connect where we give sacrificially to advance God's mission through other churches and other causes in our area. Because we're all on the same team and we want people to know Jesus. And we're not gonna stop until everyone does. If you wanna give and be a part of what God's doing through Connect, you can do that by giving online, through the app. You can even text CC Lone Tree to 77977. Let me pray for the offering and that God will continue to use your generosity and my generosity to advance his mission here in the front range. Lord, you're so good. Thank you for the, the money, the resource that you entrust to us. As we give today, will you use it to accomplish your purposes here in the front range so that your kingdom will come and your will will be done and every one will know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. If this was an encouraging service for you, do something. Share it with a friend and talk with them about it. Don't just share it and then leave. Share it and talk about it because the best way to grow in our faith is together. And to that end, if you decided to follow Jesus today and you'd like to pray with somebody on our team, you can hit the live prayer button and somebody from our team is ready to respond and pray with you. If you wanna connect in a group, Remember to sign up either through the app or online and we'll get to follow Jesus together. Because remember, we say it every week and we're gonna keep saying it because it's true. And it's an encouragement that should anchor us each day throughout the week. And that truth is this, whoever follows Jesus finds life.